Hey friends, welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be doing a palette collection tour. I wanted to do this for a little while. I wanted to do a mid-year collection tour because since the last time I did a little survey of my collection, I have gotten rid of several palettes and then brought in several new palettes as well. And I thought it would be fun to just go through everything I have so that you guys can see it. Remember to comment below if there's anything in particular that you want to see. If you want to see a tutorial on a certain palette or a combination of palettes, I have been known to take requests. I am always interested in making content that my subscribers want to see. So remember to comment below if you want to see anything specific and I would love if you also tell me if you've got these palettes you know I will have that one too and I love it so much I like to talk about eyeshadow so let's have a lot of fun let's look through my collection and just get right to it by the way, I did film today's eye look. It's not gonna be live before this video goes up because I want this one to go up in July in the middle of the year. So this look might come a little bit later, but once it's live, I'll link it down in the description box for you. And if you're new to my channel, hey, my name's Rachel. I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love to play with colorful eyeshadow. I usually upload about three videos a week, all eyeshadow related content. So if you'd like to see more, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna move my camera so that we can look at some palettes. All right guys, so I'm not gonna do this in any particular order because I have them kind of organized as far as how they get placed in my cabinet. And they're usually by size, a little bit by brand, but mainly by size. So I'm just gonna keep them in that order as we go and let's get started. This first palette, this is the Ace Beauté palette that first caught my eye. I thought it was so beautiful. I love this color story. Look at how gorgeous this is. The blues, the greens. This is a blue green palette that's done so well because there is nothing in here that's a duplicate everything makes sense and there is such a beautiful variety of blue and green tones really i mean it's just two colors right but there is so much diversity within those two colors it's done beautifully my one qualm with with this particular palette in the old formula is that some of the shimmers are not actually as opaque as i'd like them to be i hope that that's a change they made in their new formula when they when they upgraded hopefully they made the shimmers and some of these lighter mattes more opaque but overall beautiful beautiful color story i think it's gorgeous here now is the Ace Beauté Flare Palette. This is also the old formula. You see it's just a thinner package. And this is the palette that so reminds me of Autumn. Autumn, Fall, Pumpkin Spice, Jumping in Leaves, none of the other palettes in my collection give me the vibes of Autumn as much as this one. I think that this color story is so unique. I love these rusty tones here, the depths of blue, but then a bright pop of blue shimmer. Then we've got more unusual colors like a vermilion and this beautiful aubergine color here. And then a few interesting colors such as this acid green and sort of a dove gray lavender over here. It's just a very interesting palette. I think it has a nice assortment of colors and shades. And even though it's the old formula, I actually get a decent amount of use from this palette in particular. So really, really pretty. I, I recommend this palette so much. Actually, both of the Espute palettes. Now we've got the Wilderness palette from Beauty Bay. This is the first palette I got from Beauty Bay. And honestly, it's my favorite. I think that the assortment of colors in this, just like the others, fabulous. It's just well curated. I noticed recently for the first time that basically this upper corner of the palette is cool tones, whereas the lower corner is warm tones. And I think that that's laid out in a really smart way. They also laid it out in like rows, so you could do the blue row, the green row, the more um, mossy, yellowy sorts of tones here, and then the red browns and oranges here. It just makes sense. It's a lovely assortment of colors, beautiful range, light, medium, dark mattes, shimmers in all kinds of interesting colors, but none of the shimmers are too dark. I personally prefer light to mid-tone shimmers, so I like all of these. All of them get used for me, and I just think it's a beautiful palette. Now, Beauty Bay is not my absolute favorite formula, but I do really like it. And once you know how to work with it, specifically dark to light, then you'll find that you'll have much more success. It is a beautiful palette. It's got so much variety. I think it's great. It's just a really solid palette. I'm sorry if the camera had to shift there. My uh, battery was dying, so I needed to find an extension cord. Anyway, moving on. This is the second palette I have from Beauty Bay. This is the Love Notes palette. This was the release for 2022 Valentine's Day. And overall, I think it's a pretty palette. I really like this packaging, actually. I like that the, uh, the words here are embossed and they're textured. And then it's got all these lovely filigree details all over the place. And these little flashes of light as though you were shining onto a gemstone or an opal. It's just really kind of cool. And we've got these little bubbles and stuff. It's pretty packaging. It's nothing insane. It's not as remarkable as Uden's eye packaging or even some of ColourPop's cardboard stuff, but it is cute and it's unique. So inside the palette, 
mainly pinks and purples. We've got a couple of brownish shades here and then some more berry tones over here, but overall it's a pink and purple palette. I have said so many times that I think that this palette is a little bit redundant. This row right here probably could have been pared down to two. These shades are almost the same. This one's darker, this one's lighter, but they're pretty much the same. Um, and then all these light pink mattes as well, particularly these two and this one could have done with probably just one of them. I think that this palette really would have benefited from adding in some more blue toned purples. I think that would have complemented these shades right here in such a beautiful way. And it also would have worked with some of these shimmers. You know, a blue toned purple would have been so nice with these more champagne-y, peachy colored shimmers. And you could have deepened it with one of the dark purples or, you know, one of these shades here. I think the palette could have been done a little bit better, but if they wanted to keep it as pink and purple, well, here you go. It is a nice palette. I actually have this one listed for sale because it just doesn't excite me. I bought it a little bit on impulse, kind of a bandwagon sort of thing. I probably shouldn't have bought it. I do regret it, but it's a pretty palette overall. I have nothing bad to say about it as far as quality or performance. It's just, I think it could have been more well-rounded in shade range and it's, it's not as dynamic as I would like it to be. Also, because it's Beauty Bay formula, you really should go from the darkest shade to the lightest shade because these three mattes do not build well on top of other mattes. They get patchy and they don't blend. So with All Beauty Bay, if you wanna get a lot of dimension and depth to your looks, make sure you start with the darkest shades first and then blend out from there. But it is a pretty palette, I do like it. All right, here is the Melt Amor y Mani Posas palette. This is the eyeshadow palette that I used for today's look, which again is not live yet at the time of you seeing this video, but it will be live relatively soon and I'll link it in the description box once it is. So this is the Melt Amor y Mani Posas palette. Absolutely beautiful. I love how simple and elegant it is on the back here. And you can see these butterflies are raised and they're also glossy. There's so much detail, like it's not just a, a standard butterfly sticker, you know, you've got all these tiny little dots of detail all throughout and then the wings are multifaceted in different colors. And then on the other side, I like this side a little bit less. I do really like the butterfly element. It took me a while to realize that these in the center are actually hummingbirds. They looked kind of spiky to me and I, I thought it was kind of like, I don't know, spikes around the heart or something, I don't know. And I like the details and the, the care that they've put into it. But what we really care about is the inside. So let's look at the inside. Beautiful, beautiful palette. It is so gorgeous. I love the array of colors. This green row especially really speaks to me. We've got light, medium, dark. We've got two different shimmers, a sagey silver shimmer and then an incredible teal shimmer. So beautiful. I might just build a look around this shade right here. It's absolutely smashing. The shimmers in this palette are fantastic. They are so pigmented, so vibrant and just glorious. I love this orange one. It's one of my favorite shimmers ever. It's so amazing. <laughs> For today's look, I used these three shades right here primarily. And then I used this shimmer a little bit. And then I decided to throw some green on the lower lash line. So I actually used all of the greens on the row except for this one. But this is a beautiful palette. My only qualm with this is that these two shades are too close. I would take one of them out and replace it with a lighter toned purple to work with basically these four right here. And there you go. I think it is such a beautiful palette. I love the details. I love these little elements around the shimmers. Just an extra detail that draws your attention to that featured shade. So beautiful. Such a great palette. I know that some of Melt's releases are not as good quality it seems as some of their others but universally everyone has adored this palette it's really good quality it's a it's beautiful now here's the ColourPop play it jewel palette this is my only mega palette from ColourPop. at one point i had the stone cold fox but i sold that on because i just didn't use it i think that this palette's really cute overall i like the packaging it's a little bit too busy for my taste it's a little bit hard to read and i wish that for the center play it jewel like the title of the palette they would have put it on top of a raised gold section like this so that it'd be easier to see but they didn't and that's okay. Um, it's supposed to be a kaleidoscope. I think that the Through My Eyes palette, actually I can show you from ColourPop, which is also a kaleidoscope, is actually done better. You can see that this one is a lot more calming for the eyes, probably because it's monochromatic and a little bit further away, it's not quite as zoomed in. Whereas this one is quite busy and a lot more distracting. But anyway, we're talking about Play It Jewel. I have actually customized this palette. So what you see on the inside, is not exactly what you get if you were to buy this from ColourPop itself. Any shade that you see has a dot next to it is something that I have replaced. Now, if it has two dots, it's basically the same shade. But if it has one dot, it's totally different. So this shade right here, it's called Crystalline, but I replaced it with the shade Lace Up 
from the ColourPop So Very Lovely palette, but I swatched them. There's a whole video about it. I can card it above for you if you wanna see. The whole video about how I did it, you can watch me go through the process. I swatched them and basically this sh lace up shade is the same as the crystalline shade. So when I'm using this palette for a tutorial, I can say, okay, use crystalline and you're gonna get the same look, you know? Whereas this shade right here is called Rocker, but there's one dot and that means that the color is totally different. This is actually the shade Macaron from the So Very Lovely palette and it's a light purple, obviously, which is not in any way similar to the ColourPop original shade Rocker. So I wouldn't be able to use that shade in a tutorial and say grab Rocker because you're gonna get a completely different look. So any, any shadow that you see has a dot next to it or two or words or whatever, those have been replaced, but everything else is original to the palette. I like this palette. I sometimes forget about it because it's big and I don't really remember mega palettes, just like I don't remember the really small palettes. They slip by the wayside because they're not as curated as far as a color story. And so I don't always think about them when I'm thinking of a color story. Does that make sense? However, this is good quality. I do like this palette. And now I'm looking at it, I kind of want to dip back into it because it does have so many really beautiful colors. This tiara shade is gorgeous. I really want to play with that shade there. Oh, it's so pretty. So anyway, this is the Play Jewel palette, slightly customized to my preferences, but there you go. The last big palette in my collection is the Michaela palette from Glamlight. Now, this is the original one. Michaela just released Pot 2 with Glamlight, which is gold and green themed. And if I had to choose, I'd probably choose that one over this one, but I have this one now and I do like this palette. It's pretty good. I like Glam Light's formula. I really like these bottom three rows. The top two rows don't really get used, which is why I would probably prefer the pot two palette because that one doesn't have any neutrals. <laughs> that palette is all color and that's my personal preference. But this palette's really nice. I do like the array of colors. I think it's a little bit heavy on the purples without much variety. I mean, if we're gonna have six different purple shades, let's do a lavender, let's do a rosy purple, let's do a dove gray purple, but instead it's all true purples with some variety, but nothing too crazy. I don't know, I think that that was kind of a missed opportunity. Oh, and there's a purple here too. So we'll make it seven purples. This one is much more silvery, but again, it's a purple shimmer. The whole row, I don't really use. Overall, I think the palette's nice. You do get some really pretty looks when you combine these blues and greens. It doesn't excite me as much as it used to, I have considered selling it, but then whenever I need, you know, a, a more unique color, like a true minty green or a yellow, a good yellow, this is the best yellow I have in my collection. So when I need one of those colors, I have to go to this palette and I like this green too. Anyway, Michaela palette from Glamlight. All right, let's grab this next pile. This one's a little bit out of order now, but it's okay. Lush Life from ColourPop. Great, great palette. Probably the best one they released in that year. I don't know, I don't remember what year, 2021 perhaps. Such a good palette. Look at this color story. I wish they hadn't done this reflective gold packaging, but aside from that, look at the colors. It, they're so vibrant and pigmented. I just think that they're beautiful. I especially like this pom-pom shade. I use it all the time. I recently did a video where I built an entire look around this shade right here on the Prowl. I can link that above for you if you want in the cards because it was a really successful eyeshadow look. I think it turned out quite pretty. I like the variety in this palette, light, medium, dark tones, and then the shimmers are all useful and interesting. And they're sort of color stories. You know, you've got berryish browns over here, a bluish row, a greenish row, and then these coral peachy shades here. I think it's very interesting. What I really especially like about this palette is that the packaging matches what you get on the inside. So when I see it lined up in my collection, I know based on the spine, what colors live inside the package. And it's just so easy for me to plan my looks and know exactly what to grab. This is a great palette. It's great quality, beautiful pigmentation and performance, buildability, blendability. You can blend it out, you can deepen it. I like the packaging itself, I like the name. It's a hit, it's a winner. This is the At Forest Sight palette. This was the collaboration between Raw Beauty Christie and ColourPop. This is one of my favorite palettes. It's one of my top three ColourPop palettes as well. I love the packaging. I do watercolor painting, so this sort of strikes a special place in my heart, all these lovely watercolors. It's cute, but it's not childish. I love the glossy elements. Nothing is embossed except for the words at Forest Sight. Everything else is flush, but you still have detail and dimension because parts of them are raised. And it's so beautiful. I love the name. I love the design, the packaging. It's beautifully done. Then on the inside, come on. I mean, come on. First off, the packaging carries through again with all the watercolor, but then the glossy elements as well. And then the color story itself is beautiful. It's so earthy. It's so grounded and rooted in reality. It's not wild or Barbies and rainbows. It's very, very 
grounded. When Christy designed this, she actually went on her computer, took a color picker tool and found pictures of the Pacific Northwest and snapped colors that were actually in nature. So everything works together in such a beautiful way. Everything complements. You've got all these lovely undertones. Everything's sort of brown based, but there's no true brown in here except maybe the puffball shade. We've got a brownish mossy green, more brownish purple colors, more brownish greenish blues. So beautiful. Two light tones, most are medium, and then three darker tones right here, and then two shimmers. I, I personally prefer a palette that is more matte heavy with a few shimmers, and that's what this is. We've got a cooler toned gold shimmer and a warm toned earthy brown silver kind of shimmer. This color right here called Let It Rain, you might think it's just black, but it actually has these little flecks of bronze in it. It's very interesting and unique, so you can deepen it, but it also brings a bit of shine. So, so beautiful. I think this palette is a winner. It's, it's also great quality. It's just awesome all around. And then we'll go back to the Through My Eyes palette between ColourPop and I Love Sarahi, another collaboration. I do prefer this Kaleidoscope packaging to the Play It Jewel packaging. I like this overall for so many more reasons. I like that it's monochromatic, so it's not as distracting. I like that it's a little bit more sturdy. It feels like slightly higher quality. I don't know if that's a matter of the mirror they use or the thickness of the cardboard or what, but it's really lovely. I like this design right here, kind of like a Celtic weave or the top of a gemstone, perhaps, just the top facets that you see. And then it's reflected back here as well and circling the shade names. It's just beautiful. And then inside is really interesting. This palette is interesting. It's a pink bronze teal sort of color story, which I've never seen anywhere else. I like the unique addition of yellow and purple to deepen things out. We've got sort of a reddish kind of shimmer over here, some lovely rosy tones, a beautiful inner corner highlight, which is like a champagne cream color. One or two more neutral shades. This one's neutral. I guess one neutral shade. And everything's just warm and cozy except for this shade right here. This is not a warm green, but it's a beautiful oceanic sort of blue shimmer that works nicely with this shade here. So if you wanted to use this one, there's a matte that you can use with it. It's not just standing out by itself with nothing to work with, you know? And you could do like a, a cool look with this yellow and the blue. It's just really, really interesting. I think that this is beautifully done, honestly. And really, I don't like the metallic insides um, of the packaging like with Lush Life here and you'll see it also with several ColourPop palettes but look at the Through My Eyes palette it's it's technically a metallic but it's a muted almost matte kind of metallic it has a tiny bit of shine to it but not too much so it doesn't detract or distract from the shades themselves but it still has a little bit of a bronze sort of feel to it. I just think the whole package is great. So this is Through My Eyes palette. This palette was released in 2019, so it's probably technically expired, but I haven't had any issues with it yet. And I think the looks I've come up with so far are lovely. I had to grab a stool, my feet were falling asleep. <laughs> I was kneeling on the floor. Okay, so here's the Limoncello palette from ColourPop. I will admit, I bought this palette almost exclusively for the packaging. I did a whole video where I was talking about palettes with my favorite packaging, and this was number one. This one and um, at Forest Sight. These were my top two palettes just for the packaging. So I lived in Italy for a little while. I wish I'd lived there much longer. <laughs> if I didn't have any ties here, then I would probably try to live in Italy. I love living in Europe. But the packaging for this palette really just captured my heart. It brought back such happy memories. I love the tile work, the shades, the colors. Nothing's too bright and vibrant, but it all is still pigmented and colorful. The elements of green and yellow and these little, these little white flowers on the lemon tree. And then the lemons themselves are actually kind of textured like the rind of a lemon. Limoncello here is raised. Colourpop is raised as well. Um, the centers of the flowers are raised and metallic. It's just so beautiful. It makes me happy. I would happily put this in my room on display and look at it and smile literally every time I see it. The elements are carried through to the back as well. These shade names are slightly raised and they're also glossy, so they stand out. I just adore this packaging. It's so beautiful. But let's talk about the shades on the inside. I know that a lot of people, even though you don't hear about this palette very much, so many people love this palette. It's kind of a staple for many people. It's a beautiful neutral palette with a couple of interesting pops of color, nothing wild and crazy. They have both warm and cool tones, and you've got warmer tones up here, but then down here, a couple more cool toned neutrals. And if you wanted to, you could add in a pop of color, you know, an inner corner highlight, some blue on the lower lash line, a little bit of green on the lid, something like that. This is the most neutral palette that I have in my collection at this point, because as we all know, I love colorful eyeshadow, but I don't know that I'll ever get rid of this palette because it makes me smile. It makes me happy. Even if the shadows no longer perform, you know, they expire, they go bad, they hard pan on me, whatever. 
I might just keep the palette and literally put it on display in my room because I think it's gorgeous. And I just, I just like this one a lot. All right, so now we're getting into BH Cosmetics. This is the Blueberry Muffin palette. At one point I had all of the brunch series palettes, I think. I think there were Blueberry Muffin, Mimosa, and Avocado Toast. I don't know that there were others within the eyeshadow palettes in the brunch series, but at one point I owned all of them. I sold Avocado Toast because I didn't really use it and I have other more exciting green palettes in my collection, but Blueberry Muffin, hello guys. The quality in here is so special. This is BH Cosmetics, really good quality. Here's the... Um, metallic packaging that I really dislike. But the palette, the shadows, the shades, the assortment, awesome quality. These browns are remarkable. I don't know that I've ever used browns as good as these. Like, they basically blend themselves. You put them on your lid and done. They're blended with almost no effort at all. I think this palette is a little bit too um, redundant with a couple of the shimmers. Now, nothing is the same. There are no actual duplicates or repeat shades in here. But within a few of these shimmers, there's a lot of similarity. I think they could have done something a bit more interesting. Maybe honestly added like an icy blue shimmer or a slightly more pink shimmer. I don't know, something that just breaks up these right here because they're all pretty close. But overall, like it's a blue and brown themed palette. With I like that most of the shimmers are light. It's just a beautiful palette. I, I really enjoy this palette. I haven't used it in a while. I kind of want to pair it with some other things. But I do very much enjoy this palette. I'm sorry, I think I knocked the camera again. I caught the cord. <laughs> I'm a mess. Okay, this is the other palette I have from the BH Cosmetics Brunch series. This is Mimosa and this is pink. Let's have a look. Really nice pink palette. I like that there are a couple of unique things like this pop of yellow and a pop of white. Two beautiful inner corner highlights, by the way. And the yellow is quite an interesting pairing with the pink, but then we have a much more orangey tone over here, which is also a good pairing with the pink. It's on theme with mimosas and it makes the palette a bit more interesting because it's not monochromatic pink. We've got a couple neutral shades here, several different shimmers, lots of mid-tones and one deepening shade here. I wish that this palette had a dark red Honestly, maybe two reds, but particularly a dark red because a dark red would be such a beautiful deepening out shade for so many of these colors. If you didn't want to go monochromatic, you didn't want to do, you know, a mid-toned pink and then a dark pink, you could do a mid-toned pink and a dark red. And it would bring in a new level of color, just a little bit more interest. So I think this palette would have benefited from that. I do like that they've got these shades right here. It makes it a bit more interesting than straight pinks. I want to play with this palette and combine it with my Cherry on Top palette from BH Cosmetics and also with my Orange Sorbet palette because then I've got the oranges and I've got the, the reds. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. They're all really, really good quality. I do like this shimmer right here because it's not pink. I specifically like it because it's sort of a tangerine, uh, creamy sort of shimmer. It's lovely. Anyway, here's a Mimosa palette. Really good eyeshadow palette. Passion in Paris from BH Cosmetics, Angelica's favorite palette of 2021, I think. I think uh, Blueberry Muffin was her favorite palette from 2020, and then this was her favorite palette for 2021. This is a gorgeous palette. It's much, much deeper toned. This one has drama and depth. It does have some lighter shades. It has some medium tone shades and then it has several deepening shades within the color story. So you get really dark blue, a dark green, an even darker greeny black sort of shade and then a dark red, two dark reds actually. This one's got a bit more purple in it. So that would work with these purple tones it's here. It's a really nice palette. The quality is great. It's a good one. This is a good one. Okay, now we're getting into some Uden's Eye. So this is the Saga of Freya Cat's Breath palette. This is part of the, of the Saga of Freya collection where they had the Saga of Freya palette, which was um, a book that opened to one eyeshadow palette, you can turn, you turn the page and you get to the other eyeshadow palette on the back side. And then I had two smaller palettes. This was the Saga of Freya Cat's Breath, and then the other one was called Amber Tears. Amber Tears was more rosy pink. I think this one is definitely the most interesting of all of them. The Saga of Freya full palette was sort of a joint collection of the two. It had shades within it that spoke to each of the two smaller palettes. But this one I think is the most interesting with this blue teal orange color story. And then each of these shimmers are so unique. Like this one is a multicolored fleck. Can you see all those different shades? Purple, blue, orange, silver. Over here is sort of a light teal silver sort of shimmer. This is a blue and white combination. So it's kind of marbled in the pan, but when you get it on your brush, it's blue and white together. And then here is an orangey peach. We've got light tones, medium tones, and deepening tones. A lovely brown that's got some sparkly specks in it. It's a very interesting and beautiful palette. It performs really nicely. And until I got the orange sorbet palette from BH Cosmetics, which is gonna come later, this was the best orange in my collection. And honestly, you can go a few different directions within the palette itself. 
it's beautiful. It's just really, really well done. And Udenzai packaging, I love their packaging. I love Udenzai packaging. Udenzai is probably my favorite brand. It's hard to say that because I have a couple really, really good brands, but I think Udenzai is my favorite. Here is the Hella palette between Udenzai and Angelica Nyquist. Angelica is my favorite YouTuber. I think we all know that. While I, I don't love the design itself, like the skeleton artwork and stuff, it's not my preference. I do love the way that this palette, I mean, this is the outer sleeve, which is the only outer sleeve that I've kept in my whole collection. This outer sleeve is grayscale with a green tint. And a lot of the details you still see, even though it's more grayscale, like all these slivers of metallic in her hair and the wolf and the snake's eyes are glossy. And it's just so unique and creative. It might not be my favorite aesthetic, but it is so well done. You have to appreciate the art history of this. And then we'll slide that off. And we've got the beautiful colors underneath that just speak to me so much. Just look at these colors. They're vibrant. I love them. But let's look at the shadows on the inside. Here is the Hella palette. Udenzai and Angelica Nyquist amazing gorgeous gorgeous color story yellowy green tones we've got a couple of really lovely pops of green some a deepening shade here and then we go into more pinky um floral kinds of tones with these pinks and purpley shades a deepening shade here for that side of things this shade here double-sided can be used as a face highlighter or an inner corner highlight or a topper shade this shade here complete is a much darker tone but it's got a lot of silver in it it's just beautiful beautiful palette there are two shades in here, Wolf and Underworld, which are not the best on my personal skin tone, but it's not my palette. You know, this is Angelica's palette and her dream, and these colors look awesome on her. I recently did a, uh, a Ranking My Udin's Eye video. I don't know if that's live at the time of this filming, but anyway, you'll see that this was ranked number two out of all my Udin's Eye palettes because I have another palette where every shade looks great on me, so that one had to go higher. But I love this palette. I love the color story and the vibrance and the pigmentation, the color selection and how they put so much time into getting things right. It's just beautiful. It's a beautifully done palette. I'm so, so happy to have supported Angelica. I bought this one new. It's one of the few palettes I've bought new and I was just happy to support her. She did a wonderful job. And here is the Udenzai Norns palette. This is the first palette I got from the brand. A look at the packaging, absolutely stunning. The details, the colors, these little pops of shimmer and sparkle and little stars and oh my goodness, it's beautiful. The Norns are apparently sisters who weave the web of destiny. So past, present, future sort of thing. I don't know hardly anything about Norse mythology, but this hat is actually really lovely. Now this palette doesn't get as much use as I thought it would because now I have other palettes in my collection that excite me a bit more, but this is a really good quality palette. I really wanna play with these two shades right here. Um, the whole bottom row is multi-chromes, they're just gorgeous. I do like this palette a lot. You know, the, the, the purple matte, the purple shimmer, the brown matte, sort of a brownish sort of shimmer. I'm not sure what these two formulas are. They're not the regular matte or the regular shimmer formula, and I find that they're both kind of difficult to work with, so they don't really get used. But the rest of the shadows in the palette do get used. This orange is really, really pretty. It's not as standout as my Melt Orange within the Amori Mariposas palette, but it is a good orange. This blue is so beautiful. Overall, it's a lovely palette. It doesn't get as much use as it did in the beginning, but it is really, really beautiful. Another Udin's Eye palette is their collaboration. This was part of the original Legendary Diversa trio. This is the Hummingbird palette collaboration with Tina from the Fancy Face. And again, with the packaging, they just knock it out of the park. And the inside of the palette is absolutely stunning. It's so, so beautiful. I just adore these colors. There's not really a color story. For me, at least, it's more an assortment of beautiful, beautiful shimmers. You can get a complete look out of this. If you have my eyeshadow preferences, because you could use the blues here, or you could use the uh, more reddish brown tones and then grab a shimmer. Uh, this is a dark, dark purple. So you can get a complete look. I usually dip into this palette for a shimmer to pull out to pair with something else. I did a video where I was swatching all of my lime green shimmers because that's one of my favorite colors. And this one was number one. Out of nine, eight or nine lime green shimmers, this was number one, hands down. Absolutely amazing. I think it's a great palette. Tina and Uden's I did a wonderful job. And then, of course, we have the Sulmona 2 eyeshadow palette. This is their newest release, another one that I bought new. Look at the packaging. <laughs> I could say that about every Udin's Eye palette. The packaging, they knock it out of the park. 
all these details, all these little spots of interest and color it flashes against the light. So beautiful. Sol mona means sun and moon. Sol is sun and mona is moon. So we've got the images of the sun and moon in different um, in different places and it's uh, it's beautiful. This is number one out of my Uden's Eye ranking because within this palette, every single shade on me is beautiful. There's no dud in here. I will use all of these shadows. I love that they're all the shimmers are mid or light tone. There are no super dark shimmers. I love that we've got a dark blue, a dark purple, and a black to deepen out any of these colors, but those are the deepest shades in the palette, so there's nothing that's, um, again, with my eyeshadow preferences, nothing's getting wasted. Everything's getting used. It's absolutely beautiful. The color story is, is interesting and pretty and varied. No duplicates, but not too much of anything either. You've got a little green aqua color, a little blue, a little purple, a little pink, a little orangey, a little yellow. I mean, what more could you want? If I could design a palette, it'd probably look like this. It's so beautiful. So this is the Sol Monet 2 eyeshadow palette from Udon's Eye. And the last one in this pile is the Dirty Martini from Glam Light. This is my favorite green palette. Now we do have a brown here, two blues, and more of an orangey, bronzy sort of combo up there. But aside from that, it's pretty much monochromatic. But there are so many different ways that you could go. It's good glam light formula. It performs beautifully. This shade here, Green Olive, is my favorite shade in the palette. It's absolutely gorgeous. So interesting. Um, I like that we've got some lighter tones. But then we've got medium tones in most of the range. And then we've got a couple deepening tones as well. And then shimmers in different but complementary colors. It's a beautifully done eyeshadow palette. I have considered getting other ones from this Happy Hour collection. But none of them excite me as much as Dirty Martini. All right, let's bring these last two piles a little bit closer. I think my baby's starting to wake up, so I want to kind of... <laughs> Try to hurry through a bit. We'll start with the ColourPop 9 Pants. This is the High Tide palette. It's all teal. I love the sea urchin design on the outside. ColourPop's cardboard packaging is so good. So much better than their plastic. I mean, look at this. It's thinner. It's sleeker. It feels more quality and just better overall. It doesn't have this annoying sound or fingerprints or the reflection of lights and stuff. It's just better. And then I'll show you on the inside. So this is the High Tide palette. It is teal. The packaging carries through. This is a beautiful selection of teal colors. We've got a couple more minty shades here, but overall it's teal. I like the variety of shimmers, and overall it's just a really good palette. I used this one pretty recently. It kind of sits in my collection, doesn't get a lot of use because I don't often reach for teal. And honestly, I have some other shadows in my collection which might excite me a little more. So I have considered passing this one along because the occasional time I need a teal, there might be something else that I could grab. But so far I'm keeping it. It's a really good palette. And then the uh, the Meant to Be palette in the plastic packaging, this is a great, aside from the packaging, this is a great palette. It is such a good assortment of mint toned shades. So good. You even have a couple deepening shades, which is kind of a hard thing to get with mint. I love the shimmers. They're all unique. They're all good. Um, the plastic packaging stinks. Sometimes the shadows will pop out and slide around underneath of it. So you have to try to like pull them back into place or they'll just drop out completely and you have to put them back in order and hopefully you either get it right or go online um, and find a picture of the palette and try to match up the colors. But this is a good mint palette. A lot of variety within the shade of mint. A lot of beautiful shimmers, a nice inner corner highlight here and here. It's a beautiful palette. This is kind of a staple in my collection. I don't have most of their monochromatic palettes anymore, but this one is certainly worth keeping. And I feel the same way about the Blue Moon palette, actually. Um, they have two blue monochromatic palettes. The Blue Moon is much, much deeper toned. Beautiful, true blues. The other one is called On Cloud Blue, and that's more pastel blue. Also nice, but not with this kind of depth because of all these deep shades right here. And this, I think, is just a much more true blue palette. The other one's sort of baby blues. This one has a baby blue, but then it has a lot of other ones as well. None of these shades are duplicate or redundant. They all make sense. They all work within the palette. It's just a really well done, great quality blue eyeshadow palette. I have no complaints about it. It's got a good inner corner highlight here. It's lovely. It's a really, really good blue eyeshadow palette. We've got the Child palette right here. This was the first of their Star Wars releases. They have since released the Darth Vader palette, the Mandalorian palette, and then an entire full Star Wars collection with a bigger palette. Honestly, they're all nice. Darth Vader and Mandalorian excite me less. I like the child best out of those three, but I also like the Star Wars palette itself. So here's the child, little baby Yoda. So cute. I love the packaging. It's quality. It feels sturdy. It's their good cardboard packaging. Baby Yoda's really cute, and we've got some little pops of uh, sparkle and metallic and embossment. Is embossment a word? We'll pretend it is. We'll pretend it's a word. And then on the back, the only thing that's raised or really stands out is the little dots. 
um, the shade names and the, and the words and everything is more subtle and matte along with the rest of the packaging, except for ColourPop, Disney, StarWars.com, Lucasfilms, etc. That is all metallic as you can see. But let's look on the inside. I really like this green palette. I think this is a beautiful assortment of green, brown, silvery, gold kinds of tones. This one, as you can see, broke, which is pretty sad. But I think that this palette is such a good idea because it's a it, it's a base of green, right? So you've got um, light, medium, and dark tones. But you can go more brown or neutral, or you can go more green. You can also grab a silver highlight, you know, like this one right here, or you could grab a gold highlight. So you could go cool toned, or you can go warm toned. It's just really nicely laid out. This whole row here, these are the warm tones, and then everything else is a blend of warm, cool. I don't know. I think this palette is really well done. I haven't used it in a while because honestly, I sort of forgot about it. I kind of want to play with it again because it's really, really good. The shade here, Baby Face, and then Little Frog. So, first off, the names. <laughs> I mean, Little Frog, come on. This is the cutest name ever with a little bitty frog here. But the shadows themselves, they perform really well. They are lovely colors. I like the deepening shades. They're really good. And then this is an amazing inner corner highlight or a topper shade or uh, just a beautiful shimmer all around. It's a really nice palette. I wish it had it broken, but I can still dip my finger or my brush in there and kind of get the dregs of the pan. It's really nice. And then I've got the Orchid You Not palette from ColourPop. Another, uh, this is their most recent monochromatic release. This is really, really good quality. I really went back and forth on this one for a while. Like, should I get it? Would I use these colors? But I do very much like these colors. I was a little concerned that maybe it wouldn't get as much use because it doesn't have the lighter tones, but this is a great palette to pair with anything else. It's pretty hard to get these sorts of colors in a matte formula because it often is patchy, but these are not patchy. These are really, really good. So I think that this is going to be a nice addition to my collection. And I like this shade here called Pretty One because it's um, it really just stands out. It's a great inner corner highlight where you could lighten up a look significantly by throwing that one on instead of one of these mid-tone shimmers. It's beautiful. It's just really nice. And then we have the All Amethyst palette from ColourPop. This one, adore the packaging, so, so beautiful. This is what BH Cosmetics birthstone packaging should have been. A beautiful picture of a crystal. You see all the details, you see all the facets. It doesn't look cartoony, it doesn't look cheap. And then these little clusters of stars, these shade names are slightly emb embossed and also um, glossy, and it's just, I love this packaging. I also really, really like this color story. I think that this is such a unique idea. The light cool toned purples with this interesting bluish shade, this interesting greenish kind of shade, and then a couple really bright tones here. Unfortunately, this palette does not perform very well. These three shadows all look the same on your eyes. Basically no difference. I used this palette again. I actually filmed it, but then I had to delete the video. I did use this palette a second time and I used the shimmers instead of the mattes. Oh, that's right. That's the time that I paired it with Orchid You Not. So I put these two together. I used these mattes and these shimmers and the shimmers were really, really pretty. So while I was on the verge of getting rid of this palette, then I used the shimmers and they're pretty unique. And I was like, okay, well, hold that thought. Maybe we can keep it for the shimmers. I have pretty well decided to keep this palette despite these kind of crappy uh, trio of mattes here because the shimmers are very, very pretty. This shade right here is not bad either, the Trigonal. It's a sequin formula from ColourPop, so it's a matte with sparkle in it, but it performs pretty nicely. It's just these three are super disappointing. I wish they weren't, but they are. Anyway, that's the All Amethyst palette from ColourPop. And at the same time, they released the In the Limelight palette, which is their lime green monochromatic. Fringe of the palm trees is all embossed and glossy as well. It's really cute. This is their lime eyeshadow palette, but they put in a few pops of more pinky tones, which I'm glad of. There's a goldish green over here. This will be a really nice companion with my Dirty Martini palette, with my Hella palette. It's going to be a nice companion for a lot of things. It's not super, super exciting. It, it, you don't get a lot of depth from it, obviously, because it's lime. And once you have a dark, dark lime, is it is it really lime anymore? It is a really pretty palette. It's performed nicely for me. I had to dip into the shade a lot to get the color payoff I wanted, but that's kind of to be expected with a very light toned shade. So I don't know. I think I'll keep it for a while and uh, pair it with some other palettes to see what kind of use I get out of it. And then here's a sprinkle of little magic. Now this one's quite special. This is a beautiful quality palette, beautiful performance, shade, color range, payoff. It's awesome. The packaging itself is very special. It's a little bit thicker. This feels like slightly better quality. They put a lot more attention into this packaging with all of the glitter details and um, these little raised butterflies. They're glossy and then it's kind of a sketch, but it's more the uh, vintage 
sort of feel to it, you know, like the like the old vintage Winnie the Poohs as opposed to the cartoony Winnie the Poohs. It's the same kind of thing with Tinkerbell. I love the, the way that they portrayed her on here. It's still Tinkerbell, but it's adult. It's mature. It's not childish. The glitter on the back does slightly come off on your fingers, but it's not the end of the world because it's really, really small. And then here you've got a picture of Peter Pan flying with the darling children. So the inside of the palette, again, pretty sure these two are going to shatter on me at some point, which will be so sad. But this is a beautiful palette. It performs incredibly. It's really, really good quality. I wish that these two shades were more different. I think that they're just too close. Like this is light tone and this is a light medium, but they're basically, you know, they're very close to the same color. But we've got a nice shimmer down here and we've got all these interesting greens. This is such a lovely, I won't say a true grass green because it, it really does have a hint of blue in it as well. And then the shade here, the shimmer is sort of a silvery light green. This is a silvery dark green. This is a nice almost lime but it has a lot more yellow in it and I think it might be kind of grayscale as well I don't know they're just it's just a really beautiful palette you get a lot of looks considering that there are only nine sh um, shans, <laughs> shadows or pans and uh, it's a great deepening shade as well which the limelight palette does not offer so I have already paired these two together the first time I used limelight I put it with sprinkle a little magic and was able to deepen it up a little bit both good palettes. And then the final ColourPop palette that I have here is the Lilac You A Lot. Another excellent staple in my collection. This is a really, really good light purple eyeshadow palette. You know, you've got a couple dark purples as well. Overall, it's more lighter toned. This one might look like a brown, but it's actually got a lot of purple in it. This is a lovely bubblegum sort of pink with a purple undertone. It's just a beautiful lilac themed palette. I mean, they got a lot of colors considering that lilac is sort of a narrow range and it's only nine pans and it's more or less monochromatic, but everything works together. It's just really well done. These two obviously are not lilac, <laughs> but I think pretty much everything else here, including this one when it's on the skin, can count as more lilac um, shades. I like that they put the deepening shades. I always do. I always want a way to deepen my looks and the shimmers are all very pretty and each one is different. So this is a really good staple in my collection, just like Blue Moon and Mint to Be. And finally, we've got this last pile of BH Cosmetics, actually. We've got Birthstone Series. This is turquoise for December. Um, and there's Peridot for August. I have done videos on both of these palettes. Those videos will go live in their corresponding months. They're both incredible quality. They, oh, baby's awake. <laughs> you might hear on the monitor. These are such good quality. When I was talking about the lime green shimmer and the hummingbird palette, this was one of the ones that I swatched and this was the second best in my collection, possibly tied with first for the hummingbird. So, so good. When I used these palettes again to make their dedicated month videos, I was shocked. I'm like, oh my word, can I get rid of this palette? It is so good. And I felt that way about both Amazing. of Amazing, both of these amazing quality palettes. They both have a great variety of colors and you could go a couple of different directions, which is impressive considering that they're, they're each only six shadows. Now these glitters I just ignore because they're awful. So it's a six shadow palette essentially. And within the turquoise palette, you could go blue, you could go blue gold or, or blue pink or blue brown. You could go brown gold or pink gold, at least three different directions in the colors here. And then in the um, peridot palette, you can do green with the yellow or green with the pink or brownish pink and deepen it with this green over here. You could do more of a, a yellow green blue sort of combination. Again, several different color directions within just six shades and the shadows perform amazingly. They are so good. So yeah, I had five of these all together. I also had garnet, opal, and sapphire. I've decided to keep these two for the time being and I, I really look forward to playing with them more. They're super good quality. This little Uden's Eye palette kind of snuck in there, didn't he? This is the Elva 2 Mini Forest palette. I don't know if you can see the detail right here. There's actually a person in really light. I'll try to show it to you like this. There we go. Can you see the person? You can see the eyes with a little glimmer next to the next to the eye. It looks like a wood nymph or a forest sprite. And then there's what looks like a stag over here with horns. It's beautiful. The details in Uden's eye packaging are striking. There's so much attention to the tiniest little things. They're absolutely done beautifully well. See these tiny little butterflies everywhere? I'm sorry, I'm out of camera, out of focus. See the little butterflies? They're almost not there, and yet they are there. Tiny little stars, they're beautiful. So, the Elva 2 Mini Forest. I think that this palette is lovely. It's not my favorite size. It's actually a little bit smaller than I prefer. Kind of like 9 to 16 pan, that's sort of my happy spot. But this is such an interesting color story. 
Much like the two birthstone palettes, you can go in a couple of different directions with these more earthy tones of brown and green or brown and yellow. You could do yellow and blue and you've got a shimmer blue over here. You can deepen any of these colors with the brown matte. And then there's this interesting pinky shimmer as well. It's beautiful. It's great Udenside quality. It's an interesting color story. When I do a look with this palette, I'm always happy with it and always sort of surprised again. Like, oh, that was so nice and easy and interesting. It's, it's a good palette. You can tell I'm starting to get tired. I've slowed down a bit and my voice is, is fading a little. I've only got three left. These are some of the newest palettes in my collection. They are all from BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop series. These are great quality. The first one I bought was Orange Sorbet and I got this because I had a dearth of orange eyeshadows. Really the best orange eyeshadow I had was within the Cat's Breath palette. I like orange eyeshadow and I didn't have a great selection. So I got this on Poshmark for $10 and I think the shadows inside are absolutely smashing. Just the assortment of colors. You definitely have some true oranges, but you've also got a range of peachy apricot kinds of colors. And then this one over here is a very brown orange. It's a beautiful collection of colors. It's monochromatic, but not too much. And the shadows perform like a dream. They are such great quality. This is BH Cosmetics fantastic formula. So I'm enjoying this, this palette a lot. And then the next one that I got was the pistachio palette, which is the green one, obviously. This is the first one to which I was drawn when I saw them. This is the first one that I went, oh, that's so pretty. Um, I decided not to buy this, this one for a while because I had Dirty Martini from Glamlay and I thought, well, this is the only green palette I'll ever need. But this one definitely has some different tones and some more minty tones and some really unique shimmers. And when I found this one on Poshmark, Again, for $10, I was like, okay, that's a, that's a good one. We'll get that one. I think I paired it with Blue Moon and it performed so beautifully. The quality is amazing. I love the shimmer over here because it's kind of a combination of gold silver with a hint of green. It's a really unique shimmer. And just it's just beautiful overall. I think that if I were to get rid of the High Tide palette, it's because of this one, because this shade right here is definitely a little bit more teal than it is green. And then I've got this shade here, which is kind of a tealy silver kind of shimmer. You know what I mean? Like a couple selected shadows from within my collection could probably replace High Tide adequately enough that I don't need to have an entire palette for it. I haven't made that decision yet, but the last one and the newest one to my collection is Cherry on Top. And this is the red palette. It's red and pink, really, but it's a really good red palette. I went back and forth. I made a whole video talking about which red palettes I considered and why I eventually ended up with this one. To be totally honest, the other red palette that was a contender for number one was the September Rose Still Pretty palette. And really, I kind of still want that one. I kind of prefer that one a little bit to this one simply because it has a few more true red shades and it has a bigger assortment of shadows and shimmers and just colors in general. You have some more purple, some more pink. I think there's a gold in there and just a few other shadows as well. But I couldn't find that one for the price that I was willing to pay. And also, I don't know the September Rose quality. So I decided to get this one because it fit in with what I had. I know BH Cosmetics. I know that I love BH Cosmetics. And this one didn't often come up for sale as much as some of the others in the collection. So when I saw this one, I grabbed it. But it's really good quality as well. I like that there's a good range of red tones with some more pinky colors as well. We've got a beautiful pink shimmer here. This is a red shimmer with like a black base. I don't know. And then this pink shimmer here just calls out to you. It's like, pay attention to me. I want some love. It's so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. So those are my sweet shop palettes. And that is my entire eyeshadow palette collection. All right, guys, so there you go. I have so much fun playing with eyeshadow, and I'm really excited to see my collection being curated as I get to know myself better, my preferences, my colors, my undertones, what looks good on me personally. It's so much fun to bring in things that really excite me while I'm getting rid of things that no longer excite me. When I first started doing eyeshadow, I bought a lot of ColourPop, a lot of their monochromatic palettes, a lot of palettes that were good quality because I like ColourPop but maybe weren't the best colors for me. And so over time I have passed those along and brought in new ones that excite me more. So that's where I am now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to consider liking and subscribing if you wanna see lots more content. And I hope that you have a great day. So until I see you in my next video, bye.